Mr. Sergeant Arms, you're recognized. If you just raise your right hand, Governor, and just repeat after me. I, W. Asa Hutchinson. I, W. Asa Hutchinson. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. Will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Arkansas. And the Constitution of the State of Arkansas. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties of. That I will faithfully discharge the duties of. The Office of Governor the office of governor upon which I am now about to enter upon which I am about now to enter so help me God so help me God congratulations mr. president mr. speaker distinguished members of the house and the senate our constitutional officers members of the court and fellow Arkansans Thank you. I am glad they didn't recount those votes. <laughs> it is an honor to stand before you today as the 46th elected governor of Arkansas. I want to acknowledge my wife, Susan, who has who has stood with me every step of the way. I want to acknowledge my family, uh, my children, uh, Asa, John, Sarah. Seth is not here with me. Dave, thank you for all your leadership. Uh, Holly, thank you. My grandsons and my granddaughters, thank you all for being here and a part of this victory. And uh, I want to acknowledge also my Aunt Norma, who is watching this by videotape in the governor's conference room. Aunt Norma is the representative of my mom and dad's generation. My mom and dad are not here. Aunt Norma is the uh, oldest member of uh, that generation, and she survives, and she's here today to enjoy this moment for herself, for my family, and for my mom and dad. <clears throat> I particularly want to recognize what I call the White County Boys, Senator Dismang and Speaker Gillum. <laughs> I appreciate uh, your leadership and your partnership as we enter uh, this session together. And Chief Justice, I know that you hail from White County as well, but I don't dare call the Chief Justice a boy. <laughs> but this is uh, exciting for me. This is a new chapter in my life. I've been blessed in my life, but this is a new and exciting chapter that I've never had the honor of experiencing before, the legislative session, working with you, and being governor of this great state. But it's also a new day for the state of Arkansas. And guess what? A new day leads to change and sometimes the unexpected in life. And it's natural because we live in a time of consistent change, the one thing that you can count on, political change, demographic change, new technologies that we experience every day. And change we know is often resisted because we are uncertain as to whether the change is taking us in the right direction. That's when we wrestle with convictions in our heart and what is right, and that is understandable. But sometimes change is resisted because we are content and comfortable in the status quo. And let me tell you, friends and colleagues, that the status quo for Arkansas is not acceptable. <clears throat> the
because we know that if we do not adapt to new technologies, to the global marketplace, to the new issues of security that our world faces, and to the spirit of competition and the creation of jobs, then the next generation of Arkansans will be calling places like Austin and Charlotte and Dallas and New York their home. That is unacceptable. I challenge myself, the citizens of this state, and my colleagues in this room to embrace the energy of change and growth. I was in South Arkansas recently after the election, and a friend came up to me and said, you had a great victory. You had a margin that you might not have expected. Be bold in your leadership. It was a great admonition for this time. It is a new day in Arkansas, and many of my newly elected fellow Republicans are reflections of that new day, but let me assure you, everyone in this room reflects that new day in Arkansas and is a part of our leadership team. And while much is changing, what is not changed is why we are all here. We are here because of the people of Arkansas. We are here for the people of Arkansas. On that, I know we agree and binds us together. But governing is not about which po political party is in the majority. Governing is about setting aside differences and searching for common ground. And as we search for the common ground, we realize quickly that our differences are smaller than we thought and our hearts are larger than we imagined. We realize that we all care about the state we love and that we can work together to accomplish even more to enhance freedom and the spirit that is uniquely American and yes, uniquely Arkansas. As you know, I've had five barbecues in the last week. <laughs> I will not be having barbecue tonight. <laughs> Why did we bring our inauguration festivals to Rogers and Fort Smith and Jonesboro and El Dorado? It is because this new day in Arkansas of opportunity is for everyone. We, we, will, we don't want anyone, and we will not allow anyone to be left on the side of the road. Opportunity is for all. We are unified, searching for new opportunities, and excited about the future. I want to address very briefly today the upcoming legislative session, and I want to talk about a number of things that are important to me, that I know will be important to you, and that we will be working on together. First of all, in my judgment, the first order of business for the state of Arkansas is economic growth and job creation. We all have different priorities. We all want to improve education. We all want to build more highways. We all want to improve our criminal justice system. We all want to increase pre gay opportunities. But to do all that we need to do in this state, we have to grow our economy, and we grow our economy, we will be able to do more in every category. That is our top priority. <clears throat> the first order of business is the tax cut that will allow our state to be more competitive in our income tax rate and the first priority of that income tax rate reduction will be for the middle class. My tax plan that we will present with your leadership will be presented uh, later this week. It will provide a tax benefit for half a million Arkansans. It will allow us to be more competitive and when Arkansas has the highest tax rate in our region in terms of the income tax. We need to reduce it, we need to flatten it, we need to be competitive, and that is the starting point. 
Now, some of you will say, well, you have too high of an income tax reduction. We can't afford that. Others will say, your income tax reduction is too modest. We should do more. I think what I will be proposing is about right for Arkansas and where we are today. I welcome the debate and the discussion. It is my top priority. We'll be working with you to accomplish that. It is also important that I present along with the income tax reduction that I will be proposing a balanced budget, and we will present our balanced budget by the end of the month. As good conservative legislators, you want to see the whole picture, and we will present that whole picture with a balanced budget that will include areas of savings in the budget and efficiencies, but it will also fully fund education as is required, and uh, it will reflect the priorities that I hope that you will agree and, and concur with. It is also important that we look at education. There's many different aspects to the education proposals that will be debated in this body. One of the top proposals that I will present is the initiative to have computer science offered at every high school in Arkansas. I ask for your help, your assistance, and your enthusiasm in accomplishing this goal that will allow every small high school, every large high school, every rural high school, every urban high school to provide the young people with the same technology education as anywhere in the state, and it will give us an opportunity not to lag behind the nation, but to lead the nation. If you can just envision 20 percent of our high school students taking computer science or computer coding and learning that capability, we will graduate 6,000 graduates into our economy each year with the ability to carry on a career in computer science and computer coding. This drives our economy. It will lay the foundation. I'm enthusiastic about it, and I hope that you share that. We also need to make sure that we do all we can through our Arkansas Economic Development Commission to provide the leadership and the competitiveness in that commission that we can compete with our surrounding states. There will be legislation that will allow private sector dollars to help us to attract the best in economic development for the state of Arkansas. I ask your assistance in that effort. Another issue that we will be addressing is health care reform. And this is something we are passionate about. It's something that we must address. It is something that has not always been met with the greatest unity in this body. And I hope and I ask for your patience as I make my health care reform address on January 22nd, a short amount of time uh, please uh, be patient and await action until I have the opportunity to lay out my ideas and what I hope that you will consider uh, in terms of health care reform for the state of Arkansas in the coming uh, years that will benefit all citizens of this state. There is much to be done. Another area that is sometimes neglected and sometimes avoided is criminal justice reform. We have talked about new prison space. We have talked about the need for new parole officers. In fact, those are combined. When you look at the fact that currently we have over 3,500 prisoners that are over capacity in the Department of Corrections, which actually mirrors the precise number of parole revocations of 2014 over 2013, there is clearly a correlation. And my objective is to address this problem over the long term by working to change behavior of those that are coming out of prison so they simply do not re-enter that process months and years later. <laughs> to accomplish this, we will need more space 
but we also need to invest in more effective parole system to change behavior, and we will also need to pro provide alternatives, and we need to make sure that we have an effective reentry program that for those who are leaving prison and reentering society and hoping to get a job. Those are objectives that I think that we can work together so that we can add prison space, but in the long term we can change behavior in this state and provide more opportunity for all. Finally, I want to say we began this day with a prayer service, which is a custom in Arkansas, but I cannot tell you how much it meant to me. And in that prayer service, I had three of my former pastors participate in that service. I needed three because it takes three pastors to keep me on the right path. <laughs> but I noted each of them had a different theme. One of them is that we should pray for wisdom, as so important for our future of our leaders. Another one talked about the importance of truth as we made decisions. And then finally, they talked about the importance of justice. And those are related because as we pray for wisdom, we will find truth and we will find justice. And those are essential ingredients. And if you will join me in prayer, we might start apart. But I hope that our hearts will be knit, our hearts will come together, and that we will find solutions that will work for Arkansas that is unique to this state that will allow us to build a new day in Arkansas of a great economic future and one in which our children and grandchildren will find their future right here in the state of Arkansas that we love. Thank you, and God bless you.